with Sandy Fritz. Just a short YouTube clip here to kind of put in perspective the idea of uh, massage therapy as an outcome-based system achieving evidence-informed client goals and how that fits into multiple settings from the spa setting, wellness center, uh, clinic idea, and, and then all the way into the idea of working together uh, as a support for medical type treatments. So um, at the beginning, we're autonomous, working in the spa industry, the well health and wellness industry, uh, working with people who are being taken care of by other healthcare professionals, uh, but not inside of a medical setting, uh, dealing with goals for wellness, uh, qual quality of life, well-being, and then chronic, more chronic type stuff like stress management, uh, pain management, and functional mobility. Uh, looking at this from a perspective of a salutogenic or a movement towards health or maintaining health or supporting health, uh, coping in a, a healthy way as opposed to a pathogenic function, which is more around diagnosing and prescribing um, for illness when something is already broke down. So there is a process here that we go through and determine uh, how we can best serve the client and in what environment. So um, the general massage pattern, how it, whatever you use, is your assessment. During that general massage, you should be uh, addressing the soft tissues using a variety of pressure um, from surface to deeper. Um, and you should move all of the joints and checking for integrity of movement, um, symmetry versus asymmetry, uh, looking for hypomobile and even more important, hypermobile. Uh, look for what's working well first. Uh, and then if you identify uh, an area that is got some sort of a change in function, the next piece of that is to determine if this is uh, resourceful compensation, um, where, if, if it's related to an injury or an illness, where on the healing spectrum is that? Acute, subacute, remodeling. Um, what other care might be involved in this? Uh, and looking at what is being done there and paying attention to also the adaptive capacity of a client. So when we provide massage, even in the assessment mode, where we're not trying to change anything, it's still a stimulus with an adaptation to respond. So it doesn't make sense to introduce some sort of stimulus to change something if the person doesn't have the adaptive capacity to change. At the same time, even though the general wellness, well-being uh, approach is a, a stress on the system because it requires adaptation, it's still gentle and it is uh, productive in and of itself. You know, it just kind of smooths out the wrinkles a little bit. When you decide that 
you are going to investigate a situation more, uh, whether it is falling into the idea of supporting uh, productive compensation or managing uh, pain, uh, then you're going to make a decision about what type of intervention you're going to use. So if you are looking to manage care, if you're looking to support general homeostasis, uh, then what your approaches to intervention are going to be is management, symptom management. And two things that we do a lot uh, are uh, counter irritation and hyperstimulation analgesia. Both of these superimpose another signal into the nervous system where there is a neuroendocrine uh, response to this. In counter irritation, um, that's usually more local. What we're doing is superimposing a sensation over top of a sensation that the person might find distressing. So if a person has a, a tension headache, um, the application of massage, the feel good pressure, um, the movement of the tissues uh, require that the nervous system take go take a look at what's going on with this to see if it's a threat or not. To do that, the nervous system has to shift its attention from the symptom the person is experiencing um, and change focus to the current uh, stimulus. So these are temporary interventions. They, they are not even meant to last for a very long time and they're not meant to be uh, fixing or curative. The, the sole purpose of this is to superimpose a different set of signals on top of the existing um, sensations so that the person can, can get away from it a little bit. So we certainly do that with massage, but we can use hot and cold. Uh, we can use uh, suction. We can um, use... Um, maybe a, an ointment that has a cooling or a heating effect to it. Uh, so the, the goal is to provide comfort care. And these can all pretty much be taught to clients uh, to support self-care while they're uh, at, at home or in between sessions. Hyperstimulation analgesia falls into that same realm. Analgesia relates to um, the idea of pain reduction. So it has a little bit more focus uh, around the outcome of pain management. But a lot of people mistakenly uh, identify stiffness um, uh, as a pain sensation or tingling as a pain sensation or uh, sometimes a numb sensation that would come usually with some sort of nervous system involvement. Um, an example might be carpal tunnel. Um, that is, you know, a little bit more focused, and sometimes it can even involve the idea of a good hurt, uh, something that might last a little longer, uh, creating, you, know, you might use a little bit of, of localized friction in an area like that. Um, but recall that friction as an intervention also is... Uh, 
going to challenge for a shift or a change rather than a, a management. So depends on how aggressive you are with the friction. Suction cups too can be used in moderation as a hyperstimulation analgesic. Neither one of these counter irritation or hyperstimulation analgesic as interventions are looking to uh, change anything. It's, it's looking to mask and provide relief. And this is excellent. The, I mean, many, many, many of the medications people take are focused to do just that. Uh, then, then if we decide that something is, you know, can change, it can can move, it can be altered, then our interventions um, can be, a, you know, take on a different class. You're expecting a change. Uh, a lot of them uh, involve a creation of a uh, pressure or a lift into the soft tissues, uh, some sort of uh, introduction of a push or pull on the part of the client, some sort of active movement, a, a passive movement, like a pin and stretch where you hold the area uh, in a fixed space, and then they move the distal joint back and forth. Uh, scraping. Um, this is my little scraping tool. I love this little tool. It's a butter knife, right? And uh, But the intent of a tool like that is uh, there's multiple uh, things you can do with it. It can be used for counter irritation. It can be used for hyperstimulation analgesia. You got to make sure that the intensity and the duration of what you do with it uh, does not cause tissue damage and does not cause inflammation. You, but you might want to work with it until you get a histamine response, which is going to cause the a vasodilation in the localized area. Um, you can use that same tool to create a very focused, um, targeted, uh, just beginning inflammatory response. And that acute inflammation that is introduced, is it's just enough, just enough so that the body is going to look at that as a new injury, uh, not, not so much that it is going to really be injured tissue, but there is a creation of an inflammatory response. And then you can, uh, then you treat it like an acute, an acute injury. Um, and what you're hoping for is a rehealing with um, uh, usually more uh, connective tissue sliding and pliability. You can do the same thing with a suction cup. Um, so many of the methods that are out there in the continuing education market are in this, they're, they, they're too focused, I think, too focused on this idea of find and fix. And so uh, uh, certainly, and when we go back to this idea that assessment is the general massage and you are looking for what's working well, what is different than normal, whatever that is for the person. And you find that com by comparing one side to the other um, and then determining if this is a resourceful adaptation, resourceful compensation, but it is still bugging the person a little bit, then you would think about your 
uh, counter irritation, hyperstimulation, analgesia. If you look at this and the person has the adaptive capacity to respond, is is going to actually participate in some self-help like um, movement between massage sessions, then you can consider these types of interventions that are causing direct tissue change. That would be your where you are creating that teeny, teeny, tiny amount of inflammation. You can do that with friction. You can, uh, again, I already mentioned the scraping. You can do it with suction cups um, by moving them. You don't leave them in one spot, but that lifts and, and slides the superficial uh, layer, uh, holding into the area that, it ha that reproduces the symptom. This is the key here. You're going to apply these interventions that are first identified, uh, the area is first identified because pressure or pull or movement recreates the symptom that the person is experiencing and interpreting as distressful. You don't just do these things. It, it's needs to be specifically targeted to a symptom in the area that reproduces the person's sensations that they're experiencing. Uh, we are thinking then that uh, the tissue is uh, thick or uh, not sliding or nerves are impinged, you know, squeezed, or um, there's some uh, subclinical perpetuating non-productive inflammation in an area like a tendonitis or a bursitis, uh, that joint movement is limited. Um, and then we're going to introduce just enough so that the adaptive capacity has the ability to shift. If I were going to give you a time structure in here with a typical client uh, based on a 50 to 60 minute session, the assessment part, the general massage that moves all the tissues and moves all the joints and uh, slides the uh, fluid, you know, looks for fluid and all that, um, that should be a majority of the massage. Uh, so if I were going to give you a time frame, uh, it should be at least 30 to 40 minutes of the massage session. Then the idea of an intervention, well, that's my Gary cat back there. You might hear him mowing. Um, it, whether it is symptom management, which is your counter irritation, your hyperstimulation, algesia methodology, or it is your uh, idea of an intervention that is going to challenge the system enough so that you will get some sort of a shift or change sometimes just temporary, um, but maybe over time, uh, there will be a, a normalization of the area. Um, for the hyperstimulation, algesia, counter irritation arena, uh, you may spend three or four, maybe five minutes at the most, uh, in a local area, remembering that the whole massage acts that way as well. Um, and with the interventions that are challenging the nervous system or challenging tissue um, sliding integrity uh, function, uh, maybe three, four minutes 
um, it, you, you can't overwhelm the system with this. So that is going to absolutely require uh, ongoing care, regular appointments, while the uh, body learns, relearns how to function at a new normal. Um, now, if you try to change resourceful compensation, uh, the symptom will increase. And maybe not that day, but two or three days later. Uh, you, that's how you can kind of tell. This is, this is resourceful compensation. We're going to support that. If I try to reverse it, it comes back and maybe it's a little worse. So um, the hyperstimulation analgesia and, hyper, and counter irritation, those approaches should not make for any uh, pain with touch or pain with movement. And a lot of them are easily taught to the client so that they can manage their own care. The other interventions where you, especially if you were looking at introducing a very, very, very controlled inflammatory response into the area, and this lots of times is what happens with um, all the so-called deep tissue, certainly with friction, um, the scraping, uh, if it's done to the point where there's a histamine response, um, maybe sore the next day to the touch, but it shouldn't bruise uh, and it should be not sore to movement, but maybe a little tender to touch. If it's sore to movement and, or the, the tenderness to touch lasts more than two or three days, you did too much and you got to back off and progress much more slowly. So there are a lot of these. Uh, types of interventions. I want to share my screen with you a little bit. This is out of the newest edition of Fundamentals uh, that can be uh, helpful. So let me do that. So this is a chapter in the Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage. Uh, it was updated from the seventh edition. This happens to be the newest eighth edition. And if we just quickly look at the chapter outline here, you you can see um, where, so this is where I talk about a lot of the same stuff I just mentioned. Um, but hydrotherapy and thermal therapy, hydrotherapy is water which can produce a force, but it also can produce, uh, it can hold temperatures. It can be cold, it can be warm, it can be hot. Um, and it hydrotherapy is usually found in scope of practice for massage therapy. Hot and cold stones or implements, um, they also are a thermal therapy, but they also can be a pressure or a scraping tool. Uh, aromatherapy for our purposes in the massage therapy world is primarily a counter irritant, especially if it has menthol in it or it, it uh, introduces pleasure. It's a pleasurable smell. Certainly you can do more with it than that, uh, but that that is a, a specialization in and of itself. So here we have the implement assisted and we always function with safety first. Counter uh, KT taping is a uh, counter irritant as well as mechanically maybe supports some fluid movement. Um, it isn't big enough to be hyperstimulation analgesia. Um, so, but movement into uh, a, a warm or a hot, tub soak and then going into a cool, you know, contrast therapy, that certainly is uh, a part of the action uh, of benefit has to do with hyperstimulation analgesia. Um, now, I'm not 
looking right now at some of these other adaptive promote uh, where you mimic normal. So th this is taking the massage we already know, we've assessed, we've decided that the fluid could movement could use a little encouragement. We're going to mimic normal, same. But when we get into the connective tissue stuff, a lot of times that is also part of this uh, intervention process where we're lifting or pulling and trying to get things to slide and might use a little bit of the um, uh, creating that controlled inflammatory response. And then we have the the trigger point stuff, which is also where, especially here, you these areas that you work with are, uh, when you are assessing, mimic the sensation that the person is experiencing that they feel is distressful. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's a lot of wisdom in cultural-based systems. So... If I go quickly, are you getting all this right here? Very quickly. Um, there we go. Da, 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 da. And we look at some of the tools. There we go. Um, this area right here is implement assisted. Um, so this is what an implement does. It's a device that reduces the effort required to apply a massage, making the massage application easier for the massage therapist. If it doesn't do that, or it can't do the, uh, the action, like vibration, vibration is very hard to do. Uh, and it's an excellent counter irritant and um, so it it's something, a vibration, electronic vibration device can be helpful. Um, but even overuse of that's hard on the massage therapist. So then the other reason would be that the device can apply mechanical force more effectively than the massage therapist's hands or forearms. It, it takes the, some of the burden off of the massage therapist. So, uh, and that, you know, the way we are introducing these stimuli, the stimulus is by pushing or pulling, uh, moving, uh, which is a push or a pull. Uh, twisting is a push and pull at the same time kind of a thing. So, um, we have electrical devices, and there's a lot of um, talk about that with percussion guns and vibration devices. Um, any of these are good, but too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. And so, um, you know, you may wonder about whether or not you want to introduce these things with the percussion stuff. Make that which which sends pulses down into the tissue. You know you got to be careful where you're putting that. You don't want to put it near major blood vessels and right on top of the joints, and um, you, you don't want it by the neck. Um, a vibration device goes this away, and uh, it will create a histamine response, um, but it also overrides uh, the sensation that the person is experiencing. So they get that uh, counter irritation effect with it. That might be something to consider. Um, at our wellness center, uh, we have the full uh, body vibration plates um, and used cautiously, they do a really good job. And that would be a hyperstimulation analgesia. Plus it shakes the body enough that it potentially can support fluid movement. You gotta be careful with any of these things that you're not hurting yourself while you're using the device. And they're heavy, uh, at least they're heavier than holding your own hand up to do something. So um, be cautious with that.
So here's the scraping and here are the various scraping tools. Um, I thought uh, this use of a disposable uh, cap here, uh, you can buy these on Amazon. One of the resources I looked at when I was writing this chapter talked about this. Uh, or you can send this home for the person to work with. So it's a single use device because uh, a lot of the scraping idea, uh, they would use a coin to do that. So you're either using this to create a counter irritation, but as you approach, as you go through the sequence and you're approaching inflammatory response, you gotta be very careful. I usually will stop doing this when the tissue starts to feel warm to me. Unless in a very isolated area, I really am looking to create a very controlled inflammatory response. And then cupping, um, the suction cup, there's a lot of stuff out there about this. It's getting a little gimmicky. Uh, what it does is lifts and it decompresses. It pulls layers apart, which supports, we think, uh, connective tissue sliding, the distribution of uh, hyralon between the tissue layers and helps with the idea or the sensation of stiffness. And I think stiffness is much more of an issue uh, than we realize. Um, and people will interpret that as pain. So massage in general, if you're actually deforming the tissue and moving it around will reduce stiffness as well cupping. And you don't have to create a bunch of marks and you don't leave these on forever and ever. Uh, and you can, with a, a little bit of um, suction, you can actually support some localized tissue fluid uh, movement in there because it creates space for it to slip and slide around. Um, and then, we have the taping, um, which the sensation acts as a counter irritant. And it may, it's also a little bit of a decompression. It can lift stuff a little bit. So you might get some fluid movement. You got the biggest issue with this is that some people can be sensitive to the adhesive. And you know, when they take it off, it can kind of like almost burn. So that's the that's the area I'm looking at here. And uh, I also want to, so I also want to introduce or remind you of the uh, Health Enrichment Center School of Therapeutic Massage YouTube channel. Um, we have got lots and lots of grand information here uh, for you to take a look at. Um, things are organized in playlists uh, or they are by individual videos. Luke, my son Luke is doing a lot of this. Uh, some of them are, uh, a lot of them are captured right in the classroom while we're teaching our entry-level program or one of our continuing education programs. Um, so the, please uh, use this resource. Uh, there's no charge for it. Uh, one of the goals that Luke and I have is disseminating information that is uh, solid, uh, that's not gimmicky, that uh, is not mysterious, um, and that can help the massage therapy student as well as the practicing massage therapist be more effective, be more efficient, uh, have longevity um, in their career, and be effective. So I hope this little clip um, helps you think Think about what you're doing and gives you a little bit of guidance of where you can go and get some additional information.